Why am I here? I don't remember anything. The only thing I remember is that I was driving with my daughter and wife in the car. After that, is kind of creepy. <laughs> um Hello? <gasps> Someone just opened my door or at least unlocked it. I still can't get out. Oh. Oh my god, it's so dark. Director's office. What's this? <clears throat> We've got some keys. Subject Jason Mercier. Dear authorities, this note contains important information regarding the patient Jason Mercier of Saint, at St. Saint Valentine's Hospital. Jason Mercier is a 37-year-old man who has recently been admitted to our hospital. He is undergoing treatment at St. Valentine's Hospital, but we, do not have to contem but we do not have complete information about his condition and treatment. More information is needed about his personal and medical history. Based on our observations at the hospital, we would like to highlight some of the important points about Jason Mercier. Jason is an extremely mysterious and introverted individual. He struggles to communicate and often appears to withdraw into his own inner world. During his time at the hospital, Jason has been observed experiencing hallucinations and occasionally disassociating from reality. This raises serious concerns about Jason's mental health. We do not have clear information about why and how Jason came to the hospital. He has not provided any explanation during our conversations with him. It is imperative that Jason Mercier's treatment and observation process be closely monitored. Additionally, strict adherence to company strict adherence to hospital security protocols is essential. We request further individ <laughs> We request further investigation to obtain more information about Jason Mercier and his treatment. Sincerely, Nikolai Petrovic. I like to make shit up when I read sometimes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we have keys. That's cool. The punishment cell? I don't know if we want to go in here. Okay. It's all your fault. Yeah, I so. Um.
Here's the door. We've unlocked this. We need to get in there. From the early hours of the morning, the influx of patients and visitors began. However, the day started off like any ordinary day until those strange phone calls arrived. At 10.30, the main phone rang with a call from the number 2120. Initially, I thought it might be... Initially, I thought it might be a routine call from a patient or visitor, but there was no sound. Only silence and a strange static noise could be heard. I waited for a while, but there was nothing at the other end. A few minutes later, a second call came from the same number, and this time strange noises could be heard. I started to feel a bit concerned and decided to record the calls and report them to the security department. However, when the third call came, I was met with an even more alarming situation. The caller was speaking incoherently, and their tone was unsettling. I immediately informed the security department and continued to record and, and continued to keep records of the incoming calls. We had never encountered such situation before. For the rest of the day, things proceeded normally among the patients and visitors. However, those particular phone calls still lingered in my mind. Right on time. Where's the phone? We have no phone. <clears throat> All right, well, let's get out of here. I'm just kidding. The bathroom stall has something in it. Or maybe we're peeing. Oh no, we found a key. Outside. Well, oh, my hallucinations again. Can you help me? I don't know why, but at that moment, I just, oh, but I just apologized. And she said, this is your fault. What a strange dream. Find Jessica. Uh, Jessica, sweetheart. Bathroom. Jessica was changing clothes in the room. We had plans for today. Okay. Take care of your daily needs. Wash your face, take a shower, use the restroom, have a snack. Wash your face. 
done. Done. Shower time. All right, let's go get a snack. Our little apple sitting on our desk. Are you hungry? Eat the apple. Achievement unlocked. Uh, hello? Hello? The caller was Emily, Sarah's mother. She was asking if we would come to the birthday party. We were about to hit the road. Okay. Jessica. Jessica? After taking the flashlight, get into the car. The flashlight? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I want to see if we can see the rest of upstairs now that we've got this handy flashlight. Literally the best flashlight I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> Seriously, look how bright it is. It's amazing. Oh. Uh, there's nothing else. Okay. Let's get in the car then. Hit the road. As he says. Should we turn this off? I can't. I don't know why I put the flashlight on. Uh, and away we go. We were running late for the birthday party. That's why we chose for the shorter forest road, but a tree had blocked our path. Oh no. Oh no, look at this tree. Oh no, the cow, it's been slaughtered. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? No signal. Go up here, see if I can get us some help, Jessica. You wait in the car. Uh, we 
we have a treehouse situation. Uh, knock knock. Oh, we're just gonna go in. That's fine. Uh, hello. Is anyone home? Uh, there's a tree. Need help moving? Damn flashlight. Uh, hello? That's a clock? Oh. A picture. Is someone watching us? I mean, you literally just broke into someone's house, so yeah, maybe. I can't believe we don't have our flashlight already. God. We got another upstairs. Kind of. Hello? <gasps> There's something down here. I'm sure Jessica's fine. Jessica. not here. Well, time to go. Oh. oh. Maybe Jessica took off this way. Bash through that. Hey! Steep, but okay. 
Yeah, another flashlight. Oh, it's pointing at a note. Suicide. Wait. Okay, here's the light. Wait. Okay, we have a house. While searching for Jessica, I found a house. Perhaps she could be here. Perhaps. Great. Flashlight is out again. Today I got lost again. Those gray clouds are hovering above me, enveloping my soul. The medications. As if attempting to alleviate the darkness in my mind, but how effective they are, I don't know. This frail body, this tired mind, feels like it's getting heavier every day. No matter how hard I try, I feel like I'm lost in the darkness. People around me talk, laugh, continue to live. I, on the other hand, am an observer, a mere figure existing on the edge of life. Even though I'm in this world, I can't establish a connection with it. My journey is a kind of internal scream. Perhaps no one will read these lines, but writing seems to alleviate this weight, if only a little. Yet nothing among these pages, yet even among these pages, I feel lost. Maybe this loneliness could lead me to find someone. Perhaps in this place where I'm lost, I can find a glimmer of hope, a light, maybe. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, we know this house. So even in darkness, we should be all right. Dark. There's a basement here. It's locked. There's a bathroom here. It's locked. This is the little living room. How did I touch that? Oh. I got a key or something. Okay. Oh, a key to the basement or the bathroom? Let's try the bathroom. Nope. Basement. Nope. Neither. Okay. What if we go upstairs? Oh, there's like an office here. Alrighty, we're upstairs. It's dark. What? I can't use this item here. Combine? I can't use this item here. Combine? Wait, what's happening? I'm sorry, what's happening? I thought that was maybe like a battery or something. Oh, it's a lock. Okay. Hello? Please don't kill me, I don't know what I'm doing. Is 
to the nether room that's completely freaking dark. It's very dark, can't you think so? Oh shit. I don't, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. I'm fucking dead. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Do you think he saw us? I feel like we do need to go back. It's so dark now. Try going upstairs again. It's too dark in there, dang. I can hear though too, what the heck? Can I go in there though? It's very dark. No, nope, it won't even let me go in without light. I gotta figure out how to turn the lights on somehow. Seven. Seven and a key. <gasps> Fuck. <sighs> and yellow. Zero. Fire. So that's a zero. We have a seven and a zero. We have a key. The bathroom's open now. Hello. Hello. Come in. Hello? It says suicide, the note does. Hello. How are you? Okay. Bye. Um, hello?
Oh, the body's gone? We got a blood trail. Let's follow it. I found myself alone with the painful thoughts that I struggled to put on paper. The echoes of my daughter still intoxicate my soul, and I feel the need to empty myself by writing these lines. Her daughter... Her laughter was the only light that illuminated my world of gray, even if just a little. But life played a cruel game to steal that light away from me. What I did was not intentional. Confronting the truth from time to time, reflecting on what I've done, and what I couldn't do feels like an earthquake shaking my core. Maybe you can't understand. Perhaps no one will read these lines, but you should know that it wasn't my choice, but the circumstances beyond my control that led me down this path. My writings are nothing more than a desperate scream within myself. Even if no one reads these words, writing brings some relief. Perhaps within these pages, I am a lost soul, but maybe one day, these expressions will leave my, will leave a mark where I get lost. Same. Okay. Bolt cutters. Let's go. Oh, yeah, the dresser upstairs. Noise, noise, noise. What's over here? Oh, nothing. Okay, let's go. I gotta go upstairs in the first bedroom. There is the chained something or other. I don't know how we're supposed to find it now. Uh, here it is. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. We touched something, but I can't see that because we have no light. We touched something that did something, but... What was that something it did? <gasps> A flashlight? But I can't pick it up? Ooh. You just automatically have it? That day was another nightmare. I experienced one of the darkest moments of my life. My wife, the most precious part of my life, slipped away tragically in a car accident. The sound of the collision and shattered the shattered glass, even remembering the pains in my heart. In that moment, time stood still and everything was dragged into a sudden dark void. But the pain didn't end there. My daughter became paralyzed as a result of the accident. Witnessing her trying to cling to life every day yet failing shatters my heart even more. I raised her with my own hands, embraced her with love, and now it feels like I've taken her life with my own hands. I couldn't be a good father. Every day I questioned why I've brought so much pain to my family. Perhaps writing these lines can somewhat alleviate the destruction within me. But right now, I feel like a lost, shattered soul. Oh my god, is that her? <laughs> Fuck. <gasps> okay, it's time to resurrect. Okay, give me a second. 
Maybe we're not there yet. I can at least go in this room now because I've got a light. Oh, yeah, there's a box. Oh, that's the passcode. Right? Oh, no, shit. Okay. The heck does that key go to? What was that? There's another bathroom. Today I couldn't resist the anger boiling within me once again. I hate everything. This dull life, the painful memories, and most of all, the nightmares within myself. My doctor couldn't rescue me from this chaos. Chaos. <laughs> My doctor couldn't rescue me from this chaos. These medications, instead of calming the storm inside me, seems to intensify it. Why isn't he healing me? Why can't he find a cure for my illness? These questions are driving me even more insane. I'm lost in helplessness. My anger feels like a natural reaction of all this. Perhaps I hope this internal storm will calm one day. But for now, the darkness within me leaves a bitter taste of hatred. There's the number five right there and some feet. So we have seven, zero, and five. Oh yeah, we're back in here. I don't think we're ready to be in here though. Hold on. There it is, one. Seven, zero, one, five. Where do we put that in though? Seven, zero, one, five. I don't know the order, but that's, those are the numbers. 7015. Um, what is this? Oh, that, yeah, okay, so that is the, um, the order. So here's that. That's number seven. Okay, so seven is the second number. Um, let me write that down. Seven. Go over here real quick, because here's... The fuck? Zero. Maybe zero is the second or the third. And then the one upstairs. This one is what? The first one? One. So one, seven, zero, five. Maybe, but where would I put that? Um, 
the hell? <laughs> Is there any? Okay, let me out. Is there any point to this? Um. Okay. Go down into the big. Ah! <laughs> uh... I can barely see in here. What's down here? Nothing? It's just glowing blue for no reason? Okay. What? My daughter, my little angel, was dependent on life support in her hospital bed, and facing this reality was pre becoming increasingly difficult with each passing day. I didn't want it. No, I didn't want her to breathe in this dark world. I didn't want her, I didn't want to condemn her to this life of pain and sorrow, yet every day the sounds of the machines tethered to her body were shattering my heart. The turmoil within me alongside the pain I feel like a parent was shaken by the desire to do what was best for her. Perhaps shutting off these machines would be the best decision for her, but making that decision was deepening the cracks I had created within myself. I didn't know what to do. All I knew was that I wanted an end to my daughter's suffering, and maybe making this decision could be one final gift for her. Why are you saying it like that, bro? What? Um, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm, uh, confused. That is all. Oh, here it is. Uh, what did I say? One. Seventeen. Oh, five. Let's go. I always fought with myself. I can never change the outcome. I'm here. And I'll be here forever. This was exactly what I wanted to do myself. I wanted to kill myself in this, w in this way countless times, but I chose to surrender and I'm here now, all alone. Doctors diagnosed me with severe anxiety and depression. I'm taking my medication regularly now and I aim to heal. 
I didn't want to lose my daughter. Her cheerful laughter was the only light illuminating my world along with my wife's. My wife died because of me. Maybe if I had been more careful, both of them could still be alive. I didn't want my daughter to endure the pain after the accident. While thinking about what I could do to protect her, I thought the silent call book could be a hope. Maybe we could have a chance to keep her alive. But I summoned an unknown entity, a vague connection that was established between us, and sometimes I see it. I surrendered eventually to, avoiding har to avoid harming people. But I never wanted any of this to happen. Now I'll spend the rest of my life in the cell. Doctors will take care of me, and I'll take my medication. The diary makes me feel better, but I keep repeating stories with the same ending. It's time to end this cycle and start a new page. I've decided to finish the diary. Perhaps a new page, a new hope, and a new beginning could emerge. I hope I can find a way of salvation for my lost soul.